Welcome to the second part of Birthday Cakes. In the first part of this lesson, we looked at questions where we knew the total amount of people. For example, four people. And we knew the total amount of candles. For example, 20 candles. And we asked questions like, what would one quarter of 20 be? Now in the second part of this lesson, we're looking at questions like this, where we still know the total amount of people. Let's say in this question there's going to be five people going to the birthday party. But this time, we're going to know how many candles are left on maybe just one piece of, of the cake. So for example, on one piece, there's six candles. Now our job over here is to work out how many candles must have been on the whole cake. And we can write that like this. One fifth of some amount of candles is six. Now, my denominator tells me I'm thinking about a cake which has got five pieces. And my numerator says I'm looking at one piece this piece here, and that on that one-fifth there are six candles. So I'm going to put six in here. Now we know that if the candles are shared out evenly and there's six on one piece, then there must also be six on all these other pieces. So to work out how many candles there are in total, I use my five pieces, which I've got here from the denominator, and I times it by the amount of candles that I know are on one piece, which is six. Five times six is 30. So to finish off our question up here, one-fifth of 30 equals 6. Let's try another question a bit like that. Um, I turn up at a party and there's two-thirds of a cake left. And on those two-thirds there are 12 candles. So two-thirds of some amount of candles has left 12. So I want to work out how many candles there were to start with. I'm going to start by drawing a picture to see what this looks like. Well, I can see my denominator is telling me that this cake is split into three pieces, or thirds. So there I've got that. Now my numerator says that I'm interested in two pieces, and in those two pieces, well, between those two pieces, there are 12 candles. So to split 12 candles between two pieces, that means there must be 6 in each, because 6 plus 6 equals 12. So I can see here that in one third, there are 6 candles. So in two thirds, there are 12 candles. So in three thirds, there must be 18 candles, because there are three thirds and if in each of those thirds there are six candles, three times six equals 18. So two thirds of 18 equals 12. Let's try one more question. Uh, this time I turn up to a party where there are um, four people who are sharing a cake. Now two of those people have eaten their cake, which means there's only two pieces left. And of those two pieces, there are ten candles. So I can write that like that. On the two quarters of cake, there are ten candles. So I want to work out how many candles were there to start with. I've got the four, because that's how many people were at the party. I've got two here, because that's how many pieces of cake are left. And the ten here, represents how many candles are shared between those two pieces. So let's draw a picture and see what that looks like. Here is my cake. It's been split into four pieces. Now remember there's only two pieces left, so I'm going to say it's that piece and that piece there. And between those two pieces there are ten candles. So to share ten candles between two pieces, there must be five in this piece and five in this piece. So now it's really easy for me to work out how many candles there must have been on the whole cake. And one quarter, there were five. And two quarters, there were ten. And three quarters, there are fifteen.
and in four quarters there are twenty. So I can write that in up here. A quick way for me to work that out might have been to go, there are four pieces, or four quarters, and in each quarter there are five. So four times five equals twenty. And we can finish by just checking that that sounds right. Two quarters of twenty equals ten. Well, I know that two quarters is a half. Does half of twenty equal ten? Yes, it does, so I must have this question correct. Hopefully you've found this lesson helpful. For more help, check out teachertools.co.nz.